Alright, thought I'd uh, make a little video here while I'm loading the uh, home ship. So I'm doing a test here. I made a um, container mover here today and I'm loading some containers. So I um, did some more testing with a crane. I can, uh, I didn't really show it, but I can load, um, I can have two containers on the crane, which, you know, I would actually do co two containers with that never green and that acres I loaded those together and uh, the counterweight uh, had no problem keeping the home ship upright um, so I'm testing uh, I would like to be able to haul five containers on this um, so uh, this is currently four and then I'll go grab the um, I'll go grab another container I'll show off my container mover um, this is just the chassis of it. I haven't done any, any detailing on it yet, but, um, it's a nice functioning chassis. It works well to, um, move, um, containers around the yard and shift them so that you can easily load them on the ship. You can also double stack with that, um, container mover up there. So, uh, that's convenient to be able to, you know, I can put two stacks here and that will be nice and close. So let me just go connect this one. So as you can see, we're having no tipping problems um, with the um, home ship. You know, the um, counterweight does a really good job of keeping this um, nice and level um, while we load these containers. So the plan is to do uh, two, one, and two uh, because the crane stows in the center. So I'm going to quickly just jump up and we will grab the um, last container with my container mover here. I still need some clutch work on this. Um, but we have a uh, manual gearbox, which I prefer, and uh, turn the volume up just a little so you can hear the engine, but it, it auto clutches. Um, I like the manual just because you're mostly going to be running with um, first and uh, reverse gear with this. Need a little bit uh, quicker clutch action, so I'll just change the uh, figure on the up-down counter. So this... Um, is a uh, fixed fixed boom up it has up and down functions and then you can do um, three will extend the uh, carriage to um, to pick up containers um, you can go high enough with this to double stack them and you can pick up a double stack so you can actually transport a double stack with this um, you know and move it around the yard so let's grab this lando here I'll get close and then I'll uh, I'll get close and then I'll go and uh, I have to press the button. Actually, I can grab that uh, that bandeau that's already uh, has the green light on the top. So I'll just hit it with my uh, tires here and straighten it out. So you can use the frame of the uh, container mover to push it as well. Um, you know, in real life, you wouldn't really want to push it, you damage the bottom of the container. But, um, you know, in this, we don't have to worry about that. So just line up. So I've got it so that this moves nice and slow, so you can do precision movement. All right. Like I said, I still need to work on that clutch. That clutch is a little off. So let me back it up and uh, we'll realign here. All right. And we'll go forwards. And lower that down. I don't know if I left the connectors turned on or off, so we'll see when we get close. And I think they're off, so there we go. All right, so we can lift it up. As you can see, we can do full lift and even do a double stack. Um, I need to work on the brakes. They're um, letting it um, drop down a little bit, but, but this uh, allows you to do a double stack. So as you can see, we can... Um, we can uh, easily operate this with the um, with container at full uh, height. We can even uh, easily drive this around with two containers. You know, the clutch just keeps going because, like I said, I have to change um, the rapidity of how quickly the clutch application goes. So this is mostly weight blocks, this uh, forklift, so that it, um, you know, so that it can easily maneuver uh, multiple containers. And so we're just going to put this in position here, and then uh, that will be our final load. And something the uh, devs did um, screwed up my thrust system on the home ship, so I can go forwards, but I can't go in reverse. So I'll have to look into that and see what they changed. 
Um, you know, they also changed the the painting for the um, for my uh, thrust gauges, so that's that's screwed up at the moment. So I, you know, the thrust gauges are messed up right now. So I think it was a bug they introduced with. Um, the thrust settings, you know, I use the uh, up-down counters for my thrust, so it's something I think they did with that because the uh, gauges aren't reading properly anymore because of uh, something they did this last patch probably. So, All right, so we'll place this. We will reverse. And uh, so as you can see, it just uses the two connectors there and uses friction. There's actually some systems that do that, I believe. Uh, we'll put that in neutral. We'll close up the um, container. So one of the reasons I built this container mover the way I did with the extendable boom is I tried one with a trailer where you actually connect the front um, container handler. Um, I made it this way with the extendable front so that you can actually spawn this in the railway over there, um, in the railway uh, barn. So that allows you to um, easily spawn it in the world. So I'm going to leave that connector off until I get it right where I want it because the last thing I want is these going nuts and uh, flipping everything. So let's um, let's get this going. So we'll go up and over. I should probably add a camera onto this. Um, I like this um, extendable um, container grabber. The only issues I have with it are let's, let's uh, you know it's nice and collapsible as you can see how small it. Um, it gets so that it's very easy to stow. It's three or oh, it's four across the lights, so I can easily stow it somewhere. Um, that's why I built it um, like this. Um, the only issue I have is m mostly aesthetics, where if you look, you can see the upper pistons. Um, you know, you got a little bit of glitching going on there where the uh, piston housings aren't perfect. So um, I, that looks like angle of the. Um, of the upper pivots is different, so I'll have to I'll have to mess with that. Um, I get really sp specific with how I like that stuff. So, all right, and we will turn on our connectors there, and there we go. We're connected. So, like I said, um, as you can see with this, you can see how the uh, pneumatic pistons glitch. I don't like that, so I might make a new one. As you can see here, we have uh, four deck loaded. We have the container off the ground, and you see we are listing a little bit, um, but the counterweight is keeping us at a minimal list. Um, I haven't plumbed up the ballast uh, system, but we'll also have a system on there where the ballast water will um, will also fill to, you know, so if you were actually going to go in transit with, say, an imbalance like this, um, the ballast water could account for that and uh, change. So. We definitely want to get this close and right on top because we don't want this, you know, connecting to two containers and, and tearing everything apart. So, you see, I'm hung up on something. Let me see what I'm hung up on. I like to do it in first person perspective. So, yeah, I want to make it so that it's easily uh, controllable in career. All right, so we should be close enough for a connection. Let me look. Yep, doesn't look like we're hung up on anything. We're we're nice and close. Let's go connect this, and hopefully, nothing goes awry. I gotta jump and get it. And there we go. That should snap. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna try stowing this. Um, stowing this whole setup here. So um, let me take a quick picture. And we'll take one from the other side where you can actually see the containers. But I, I like that forklift. I tried a ton of different designs today. Um, I'm on vacation, so I decided to do some store marks. And uh, this work, this seems to work the best. So, all right. Um, where am I? All right. So let's look. Um, all right. So what we want to do is detach that. Let's raise it up. Um, and we'll try to stow this crane. So like I said, you'd want to leave a gap for stowage purposes. Um, press F8 and that will close it up. So um, I have this, some of my planes have functions. So these are uh, the Fs for function. So it's eight function keys. So whatever module you'd put on the crane, um, you know, you'd be able to see what the actual um, function is. And then you can do up to eight functions, which, you know, I could add more, but 
that's currently it's set to eight functions, which I think what's we have two is a light um, extension and then um, disconnection. So might not be able to get this uh, in front of the container. Let's see where we're at here. Um, I was hoping to get it right in front, but I think if I rotate it, I should be able to get this stowed. So let me rotate this. So I talked in another video, one of the reasons I did this kind of like knuckle boom design is I wanted to be able to rotate. Um, that way I can really precisely maneuver my um, my containers and especially if I do more modules for this. So as you can see here, I can easily stow this sideways. Um, it might have some conflict with some of the railings, but um, you know I'll see. And then I'm going to stow this um, up against its locking pipe. This keeps it from banging around while we're out to sea. Uh, press the 4 key so I can lock it. All right. Let's just take a quick look. This is literally the first time I've done this. Perfect. So as you can see, this is not touching anything. So this actually works a lot better than I even thought it was going to. So that's awesome. Um, we have eight. Uh, sorry, we have five containers on here. Um, uh, one thing I set up with this is the ability you can walk through here. So I made sure those are two apart, so you can walk through. So you can still um, come to the to the rear. There'll be a winch in the middle here, so you can do any towing missions. Um, you still do rescues off the rescue boat, and uh, you can walk between the containers. So, like I said, we have five there. We have the um, the man overboard boat. We have my new lifeboat. I just made a video on that. Um, all weather lifeboat. Um, like I said, the uh, latest patch screwed up some of my thrust settings. So we'll see um, how badly that's affected. Um, I was able to move forwards fine, but reverse, something got screwed up. It's, you know, I think it was with the paint update. Um, kind of screwed something up, so. All right, let's get started up here. All right, so that's looking good. All right, engines are on. Let's sync them. And uh, as you can see, these are white. They're supposed to be color-coded, but that paint up, that, up, what is going on here? Okay. That was just um, something. Bu oh, I, I had. I think I hit the dock. I had uh, my my stern thruster and my bow thruster on to keep me up against the dock. I didn't want to tie down, so I think I just banged off the dock and it kind of shook everything. But um, pretty good testament that it banged off the dock and everything stayed on. So, all right, let's go max thrust here. We'll see how fast we can go. This is the first time I've tested this with five containers, and it looks like we can go full speed, which, which isn't surprising. You know, this holds, it has like 158,000 liters of fuel on board right now, and it has 65,000 liters of water, which it will, auto, you know, it will eventually automatically add water um, to replace that fuel. Um, you know, so that is a considerable amount of weight compared to, uh, you know, a bunch of containers, you know. So this should have no problem with containers. Let me just take some more pictures here. And uh, we'll actually, you know, I'll do a, a little I'll do a little run to uh, Komodo here. Um, you know, I don't think, those containers are definitely not all for Komodo, but, um, you know take a run there. Um, if you look on the front deck here, all that um, noise is for these screens. So I haven't, I haven't put any of that away. That, these are not my screens. Um, I forget the person who made them, but when I eventually release this, I will um, make sure I credit them. So as you see, we are, I'm at, let me go full lock on the rudder, which I am. As you can see, I can do full lock. We don't have any, uh, any real tilting get a little bit there on the if we go from one side to the other but as you can see it's very manageable it's not going to tip over so uh, five containers um, as you can see we really didn't drop down in the water much I, I need to add more ballast water on there I manually set the ballast water so um, if you look here you can see it altimeter uh, there one there one on either side um, that's how my uh, ballast water stability system will work the um, it will automatically fill certain tanks um, based on uh, forward uh, and aft and port and starboard to uh, maintain the water line. So as you can see, our bow and our stern could probably use a little bit of water, but I manually filled those with 
with me just um, using the spawners. Uh, let's see. Let's make. I'll put a quick um, waypoint up to Komodo. You know, I can see Komodo. It's like right here. So um, let me quickly just move this. We'll use the. So that's Komodo right there. As you can see, this is our trend line where we're actually going. So let's add um, a node. We'll return. We will zoom out, and I'll add a little bit of right rudder. And we'll make that trend line match up with Komodo. You know, eventually I'll put an autopilot on here. Oh, too much. And we'll bring this orange line back to meet Komodo, and then we'll zero it out. And as you can see, the orange line's coming to Komodo. So let's uh, zero that out. Try to get it right on zero. It's my uh, rudder is a little bit too touchy for what I want right now. And then we can do. Uh, let's do. This is a neat screen system. I, uh, you know, like I said, it's not mine, but I can add. This is the old radar. Um, I I kept this on so that I can have lidar. Um, I don't know why this screen isn't turning on. I might have put it on a button. I can't remember. Um, yeah, sonar on. So this is mine as well. So all this will be credited, but I have a sonar on here. Um, I'm going to put a different radar on here. That will be the new radars, um, be a little bit more detailed radars. I'm prob um, you know, if I sit in the seat, you can see this is, me, the, this is the compass. That's the rudder um, angle. And these I might do multifunction or just do uh, cameras. You know, I can control some cameras in here already, so let me go through. Um, and we can zoom out here on the radar. I can go to cam. Um, this one's on the deck, it's still down there, so it can go up, down, left, and right. I think this is the stabilized camera. Um, what's that? T is, let's see, map, autopilot, map camera autopilot off I forget what this does let me see the nav uh, night vision laser and that's stabilized I think um, yeah I don't know I'd have to look at that cam 2 is another one that's just sitting on the deck cam 3 is just sitting on the deck cam 4 can I control cam 4 cam 4 is just a zoom in cam and then this one I actually put on the on the uh, mast. I'm gonna put I'm gonna change this and have two of these. I'll have the stabilized camera there up front and the uh, and this one up on the mast. That way you can um, you know easily control this and look. Uh, you know it'll be on the on the port of starboard side. The other one will be on the other. That way you can um, actively control these. So, you know, it, it's it's too sensitive, which um, this is how it came to fault, so I need to play with that to get that fixed. The water cannons, I'm also going to have control through the screen, so you can use the camera to control your two water cannons here. Um, we can look at those more. Um, but you have zoom on this, uh, return to the center position, night vision, and uh, you'll be able to walk through the camera. So this works well. This is a good system. Uh, again, it's not mine. Did I put in a rudder input? here. Okay, I don't know what this line is here. Am I turning? Yeah, I don't know what that orange line is. I'm going, I'm still going right to Komodo, so this line here is me kind of confused. Oh, that might be the camera. I don't know. Um, we just passed over something. I don't, I don't know this, uh, the sonar system very well either, so, but, um, it's kind of a neat system, so. Let's see what else we can do. So, it's not a I was in flying mode. Okay. So let's uh, kind of look at some other stuff while we're waiting to get to Komodo. We're almost there. Um, let's quickly look for anyone who's interested. So this area here is going to be kind of the main communal area. Um, you know, I might do paint block TV and some game stuff and kind of a lounge so that, you know, if you were working on the bridge, you can come down here and, you know, have uh, kind of a hangout, have a lounge area. Down here is where you can have the uh, the staterooms. Uh, these are much bigger than the real ship. The real ship holds like dozens of people. This one's going to be for a much smaller crew. Uh, going to have some stuff in here forward in the bow. There's still a lot of space up there, uh, but I'm going to make space for anchor lockers and stuff. Um, 
and then down below here um, is the least fleshed out area. As you can see, we still have a lot of bow area up there. Um, that's where the staterooms are. Um, but back here we have our, our diesels. Um, I still need to, you know, this has not been hit at all really for, um, for finishing. Ballast water, 65.8, um, and that's 124. Thousand liters currently on board of uh, fuel oil or diesel. All right, so we're getting close here. I'll just dock and we'll end the video there. And it's a little bit on the long side, but you know, I'm just trying to test out um, these containers. Let's add, um, let's add. We'll do 65% wind. We'll give it a little bit of wind to play with here. Um, do a quick pick. We'll add it. Um, you know, first time I've had five containers on here, so I want to test it and make sure that everything's in good shape. So, but it appears to be doing well. You know, we have a uh, looks like the wind is from the starboard. You know, from the waves, the the uh, exhaust, and so we're getting a little list to port, which is fine. Um, getting a looks like a manageable list there. Um, you know, this should have more ballast water in it, like I said, so it should be sitting even a little bit more stable than it is right now. But as you can see, it's, it has no problem. Um, you know, and you wouldn't, IRL, you wouldn't want to be going um, broadside to the waves like this. So this is going to be the biggest, um, you know, test as a full broadside on the waves. But uh, it's coming along. So add a rescue zone paint there for where the man overboard and the lifeboat are rescue boat here that's a functioning um, outboard I had to simulate and fake the outboard here as, a, as an electric for the uh, little skiff just because the parts are too big and uh, one thing I could test here as we come in um, I haven't tested this with full container so I kind of wanted to do that that's just New Jersey's pit tuner that I left on there when I was doing the ballast um, the ballast weight. Here we go. A little bit rocky seas here. Um, so up here, uh, I want to test see if you can drop the barricades full, which you can almost do. They hit the containers, but as you can see, it's not a prop. And as you can see, this is designed so this crane will stow right above the container. Um, that's why you know I can deck load uh, five and not six. That Komodo, yeah, we. Uh, we got pushed around. I think it was me hitting and interacting with something. So let's quickly go back up and we'll steer in a Komodo. Come on. I'm trying to close all these doors and we have uh, Oh, come on. I'm having door problems here. Yeah, I can leave the door open. I'll just walk it up. I'm trying to you know, keep it safe for if we had got any water in here, but um, I'll add auto ballast later. Okay, I left a bunch of rudder in there when I, um, I left a bunch of rudder in there when I went down, so that uh, steered us way off. So it was a good test. You know, we were shaking around and doing doing fine. So I was saying something they did last update uh, screwed up my system here. Like, you know, I, I normally I would bring down my um, starboard thrust, but um, you know, something they did, I my reverse isn't working, so I might just wait till they fix it next patch, hopefully. But uh, this is somebody else's compass system. I'll, I'll make sure I link that, you know, when I eventually put this out. But, um, you know, I really like having this. It's nice, easy, quick visual representation of the compass heading. And there's Komodo. I'll uh, turn down the wind here. There's no point banging on more wind. Make dock it a little bit easier. I can't do uh, as efficient of a docking because I can't, like I said, I can't put one of the screws in reverse because of uh, something they did. So I can still use uh, forward thrust and I, I have bow and stern thrusters. So that'll make it pretty easy to, uh, to get in there. But we should be able to cozy right up next to the Komodo dock and. Uh, and that'll kind of show proof of concept that we can haul five containers in there. But everything fits really nicely. Um, you know, just, just finished up these two little boats in the middle. Um, container works. 
containers stow really well. As you can see, they did really well with the high seas. Crane worked really well. Um, need to hook up our fire cannons to the camera system so you can use those. That, those are the same type of uh, cannons that I had on the Damon 2111. I have the same control system. Still some work to be done on the mast. Um, as you can see, we have an old radar and then a new um, radar. That's the LiDAR. I'm going to turn in there. What else? Uh, the lights are all where they're supposed to be. I have to just pull the microcontroller from the Damon 2111 and connect that to get all the lights working for all the different um, you know, situations. So the lighting will be accurate. All right, we'll start backing off on our thrust here. Really nice, precise thrust control on this. Um, you know, we were going 22 knots, easily got down to 15. Let's start slowing down some more. Let's get down to like eight or nine knots, maybe. All right, we'll start putting in a little bit of rudder. Won't do too much. I'm going to use the bow and stern thrust to do most of the work. Like I said, I can't. Like right now, what I'd normally do is I would just use the port screw, but, um, you know, because that would also turn us and it would let us do a slower speed very easily but and, and turn us but um, you know they screwed something up that I have to fix so all right so I'm gonna start going full stern thruster I'll just go full hard right rudder here and then I'm gonna need some bow thruster out because I did too much I'm still coming in too fast so there we go all right and we hit the dock a little bit but uh, we should be able to get right in. Let me um, start bringing back in the um, bow thruster here. This should actually work pretty well to get us right up the dock, right where we want to be. For some reason, despite the bow being much heavier, that bow thruster is much more powerful than the stern, so I don't quite know why it's like that. Just give it a little bit of... Um bow out so we're not pickling it right up against the dock. As you see easily it comes in and docks. We're gonna zero those both out and that should coast us right in. Alright and that's a nice easy docking. As you can see we could easily uh, offload all five containers right in that area there um, for a mission. Alright thank you for watching.